All right. Good evening, one and all, for tonight's episode of For Fame or For Gold. And uh, we have ourselves... That our crew that are on their barge and uh, they happen to be going down the river getting out away from what they think the bounty hunters and the guards and the law of less seeing that they have wanted posters on them now <laughs> Hopefully they're uh, getting their selves set. They, they've gotten to a uh, fair distance, they, they believe. Uh, so, so they rested through the night and the morning is coming on up. And the morning has a bit of a damp chill on the air, but it is from all looks at uh, about uh, six o'clock in the morning looking like it may be a wonderful day to the south of you you see this great forest to the north of you you see this great forest oh uh like there was a scimitar that cut through the forest and uh, made this clearing of grass plains and this wonderful irrigation system for the elements of nature for you. So at this time, you are waking on up to that. And let's see here. And I'll share this. Yes, yes, yes. And we'll go ahead and annotate and move this on over here. And uh, my little bouncing spotlight. And we are, well, you got, yeah, you got to hear uh, where you rested approximately from the, the previous session. So it's about six o'clock in the morning. Y'all are waking up or not. You just, you describe to me what you're doing. Well, Brian will... <laughs> He's always been sort of an early riser anyway. Uh, he'll wake up around six o'clock. And one of the things I want to do, there's obviously uh, probably a first mate. Is that correct? Well, yes, uh, there is. Uh, and not so much in a formal sense, but <laughs> or the traditional sense, but in the... Uh, work assignments in the pecking order on this barge. Yes, there is. Uh, so Brian wants to make his way over to the first mate uh, where uh, I might have a little bit of space to talk. All right. And um, uh, so my friend, um, I have a very unusual question to ask you. Why is it unusual? Well, because I'm not sure if your captain's been compromised or not. See, we were given two different stories. The first story we were given was that your captain and our friend uh, Dagger were spirited away to the town of Doolin. Then the second story we got was that the captain, of course, was returned to us. You've obviously known him a little bit longer than I have. Would you casually, and I do mean casually, by the way, talk to him about something that maybe only he would know or take a look at his mannerisms and see if they're the same. Well, yeah, yeah. that sounds particularly odd, but uh, 
Yes, I can try to put your uh, your uh, questions the rest, let's say. That would be much appreciated. As far as I uh, that Brian will the dad brand will find himself a nice little box and pull out his uh, holy book and do a, a little reading. All right. What are the rest of you doing? Kelly um, uh, is also fairly early to rise. And you'll note that she's sitting. Uh, is there a kind of, I think there was kind of a cover on the back end of the ship, right? Uh, yes, there is. And uh, give me a second, and I will bring up the ship because now our viewing audience now knows where we are on the geographic map, as far as that. Great. And uh, I will see about getting that on up. But yes, there's a, a covered, uh, like, uh, I don't want to say gazebo, but more like a morning. Yeah. Yeah. What is what is that made of? Like, could what? would it support Hellion's weight if she wanted to sit on top of it? I would say yes. Uh, Hellion's not a heavy. Uh, she's not female. Uh, she's not wearing armor either. As as far as that, so I would uh, I would say I I think that she would mm. be able to be uh, held by the rock. So Helion will be sat up there with her familiar uh, in the form of an owl uh, flying directly above the ship. Uh, every so often she kind of zones out as she uses her ability to look through its senses. Uh, but what she's doing is she has her painter's tools out and she is painting the kind of river and the forest leading up to the city that can just kind of be seen off in the distance from the point of view of the owl. Uh, so she'll kind of look through its senses and then come back to her own and paint some and kind of... Uh, she's just sat spending some time painting. All right. And uh, so we'll go ahead and we got Hellion back here on the, the roof. I'd say. Oh, you uh, yeah. Want, you want yeah, yeah. this side or that side? Uh, the first side is fine. All right. So we'll put you right there. Uh, let me... I'm probably better off to do this. And, uh, and that way I can move that around. And we'll make it right there is Hellion. And where's Brand? We'll go ahead and the cargo. Uh, say what? Put them at the very front by the cargo. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. All right. I'm sitting on that box. All right, there we are. And now our other two grand individuals. What are you two doing? I'm pretty sure that Cup is um, sitting maybe in the middle of the ship, so not the front of the ship next to the cargo, but in the middle. Right about there. Uh, closer to the cargo. Yeah, there. Uh -huh. Um. kind of in a meditative posture but rather than like resting uh, their eyes are kind of like looking around um, not looking at anything but in contemplation like uh, Cup is considering um, a number of things 
Oh, okay. Um, so he just sits there and will often like, you know, put a put his hand on his chin, his beak. Definitely, obviously thinking about something. Oh, okay. And Morgrath, what might you be up to? Uh, Morgrath is sitting uh, under the covered area, uh, crisscross applesauce, hands on his knees, practicing this new meditation thing. <laughs> okay, where, uh, where where under here would you like to be? Uh, just centered. Just centered? Okay. I'll... Kind of. Right there, then. And then back to the bouncing ball. So you're going to cross-legged in a... Uh, a, a position with your legs crossed and such, um, just contemplating the battles, life, what? He's focusing on calming his mind. Uh, the few times he's actually achieved a meditative state, uh, it has this amazing ability to make time go faster, uh, which makes boring stuff uh, less uh, long. Yes. Oh, okay. And you're going on down, down the, uh, down the uh, river, and uh, as Cup going... kind of notices this, Cup will say, "Listen, tell me what you hear." Continue. Who's he talking to? Uh, Morgrath. I didn't mean to interrupt you, though. Go ahead. Oh, you didn't? Uh, you didn't uh, sorry, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. You, you really didn't interrupt me. It's uh, our game, and that's what you're doing. As far as... So you... All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. What was that? <clears throat> we were letting Charles continue his description. Oh, okay. Well, you were asked uh, what was bothering you by uh, Cup. Hmm. Was that not what Cup That's said? That's not what Cup said. Oh, what Cup right. said was, listen, tell me what you hear. One of Morgoth's eyes open as he says, I can hear you talking. Cup nods. Anything else? Hmm. Uh, I can hear the ship making uh, ship noises. Mm -hmm. There's uh, water too. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about it. Not much else. Describe to me ship noises. What are... Where are the ship noises coming from? Margaret starts gesturing with his hands and uh, he's like, well, there's the one from over there. Uh, there's, uh, you know, they're from the ship. Uh, they're ship noises. Mm -hmm. Which part of the ship is loudest? Uh, hmm. That would be the front, just to let you know. <laughs> uh. Wisdom is minus two, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess like, uh, that way, I think? He says, pointing at the front. Then it nods and says, <clears throat> good. And continues uh, coaching a little bit on this. Um, it seems like uh, he's looking, the, the cup is looking for something to do, and this is perfect for them. <laughs> so, right. go ahead, Charles. No, I was just saying all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, Hellion, we'll jump over to you and your uh, owl. How, uh, how far out are you uh, 
having the owl from you. And I know you said you were looking uh, basically uh, somewhat uh, scouting the areas uh, to where you have them. So uh, just uh, give me the distance and, and such so I can give you a little bit of input input. Yeah, I guess to an extent she's scouting. Um, largely what she's attempting here is more to get a sense of... Like, she, she's just using the owl to get a different perspective to paint from. Um, if something catches her eye, obviously she's not going to ignore it. But that's, that's kind of what she's going for at the minute. Um, it's probably... 100 feet up in the air about like kind of staying above the ship okay all right 100 feet straight up uh yeah more or less okay like it's i suspect it's probably slightly difficult for it to just maintain directly above the ship so it's kind of probably circling above the ship yeah um, uh, doing a kind of lazy figure eight as it were yeah i'm fine with that i just uh the 100 feet uh from the ship was uh, so I knew whether it was uh, yeah linear, uh, horizontal, or vertical. Is all. And uh, boom, 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 and Brian. After about an hour of um, reading his uh, holy text, Brian is going to start stacking and clearing a pathway and the cargo down the middle of the ship. Oh, okay. It'll take you a little bit, some, <clears throat> some of those crates. I got nothing but time. Yeah, are, he are heavier and such. And But you get it, you do get it accomplished. And uh, let me see here. I will go ahead and let me use that. And we'll say, your oh wrong thing on that your path that you did is clear kind of you took some of the uh, least resistant routes lighter stuff to move from side to side but that will give you a good path all right <clears throat> where you won't have difficult terrain that's what kind of <clears throat> looks at this work probably starts helping but says to bram um um shouldn't the cargo be closer to the center of the ship um I'm imagining that with the uh, forecastle, the covering, uh, that it's, and, and that the fact that the sailors packed it in, that it's at a good center point as far as the ship is concerned. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, Brand's not center, the one here. The center following the boat. And Cup kind of makes a mention uh, motion in the vertical direction, not the horizontal one. Vertical? Um, Cup kind of grabs a, a sack of something, moves it over to the side of the ship where it'd be close to the water, like. Right the port or starboard he doesn't right. they don't know the difference and then moves it towards the center between those two points oh um basically with some of the fights that we have had it has been difficult getting from the back to the front and so i thought a little five foot path that we could traverse would not hurt anything. Cup shrugs and says, 
I don't know how boats work. Um, but uh, that's fine, then that's fine. I don't really know how boat, well, I know how boats work. But, right. Yeah. But Brand doesn't know how boats work. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, we can, I can check with the sailors, but they, they certainly didn't say anything when I, when I moved these things over. So, well, when you look I'm around, imagining if I was caught, when you yeah. look, uh, when you look around, when you're doing, uh, doing that, they, they don't seem to be paying you much attention since they're, they're, uh, polling quite heavily trying to make it up the up this uh river because they seem to be wor uh working against the current mm -hmm. as far as that so the uh, not saying they don't notice what you're doing but they they're more intent on the job at hand so i don't know i would think that if i was causing a major problem one of them would probably stop me. Um, I did note that you seem to have some something on your mind. Do you want to talk about it? Um, Cups thinks about it for a moment and then says, uh, raises a bird eyebrow. Um, and it's a question like a single one, right? And says, Do you have a moment? <laughs> I think we have uh, we have about six days left <laughs> before we get there. Chuck kind of nods <clears throat> um, and reaches into their pack uh, and they pull out um, a cup, just like a wooden cup, uh, clearly designed for traveling. Um, you want to gather the others or just keep it turns um, and looks <clears throat> um, yeah uh, about the time is that the uh, individual the quasi first mate comes up to uh, to uh, Brand and says everything is fine Thank you, my friend. I do appreciate it. <laughs> Glad to hear it. And he turns around and goes back to his duties. Uh, you were saying about a friend's cup? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, and cup kind of walks over to Morgrath, taps him on the shoulder uh, and says, <coughs> I'm going to show Brand something. You might want to listen. And then goes over to Hellion and kind of waves and says, you look uh, busy, but if you want it, uh, I have something to talk about. Morgrath will uh, follow. Uh, yeah, Hellion will kind of uh, finish the bit of painting that she's doing and then move to sit on the edge of the roof looking down. Tough kind of looks at it and says, how do you get that view? Like, how do you, how can you see that to paint it? Uh, she points to the owl that's flying around the puppy. And then Ooh. whistles when it comes and lands on her shoulder. The owl tells you what it sees? No, I can use magic to see through its eyes. That seems very useful. I will, you, um, you, you should tell me how to do that at some point. <laughs> I can try. A teach me, teach me moment. Exactly. <laughs> well, Cup <clears throat> goes over and goes up to um, goes up to uh, Bran. Hands him the wooden cup, just like holds it for him to take and says, uh, I'm thirsty. Could you get me a did you give me a cup? Cup or something to drink? A cup. Um, Brand can pull out his cup, but it's uh, metal, not okay. wood. 
Did you take the one, the wooden cup that Cup gave you? This isn't confusing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, no, I didn't take it, but okay, okay. I just brought up my cup. And that, yes, I am confused. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> cup just kind of watches you. Well, this is the cup. It is. Are you handing it to me? Sure. Empty? Yes. Cup takes it, fills it up with uh, water from his water from their water skin, <clears throat> and then says, um, "Morgraf, could you get me a cup of water?" And goes to hand Morgraf the metal cup that's now full of water. Morgraf takes it, looks at it. You can see the debate happen on whether or not he should think about this more. <laughs> and then hands you the full cup of water back. <laughs> um, <laughs> couple turned to Hellion and says, um, do you understand what I'm talking about here? No. Um, dumps the water out <clears throat> and then uh, gives the cup to Hellion and then says I am thirsty could you give me a cup uh, she'll take the cup um Look at you somewhat confused. Gives you this uh, flat bird expression. Different cup? Like a different cup or this like yeah, whatever. Uh she'll take her water skin, fill it fill the cup with water and then hand it back to <clears throat> Cup then takes water skin that they have, goes to fill the cup with what's left of the water skin, and it overflows. Cup says, uh, hmm, almost sarcastically, um, but with a very flat, dry sarcasm. This cup doesn't seem very useful. You're not making any sense, my friend. Can you possibly stop with the parables? <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible? <laughs> Is it within your... <laughs> Ah. And then um, drink some of the water and hands it to the cup back to Bran. It's not completely empty. Bran will drink some water also. <laughs> sure. <laughs> cup says um, if someone wants a cup of water then the cup holds water. If someone is thirsty, then the cup should hold something to drink. If a cup is full of water, then it can't be filled with anything to drink. If a cup is empty, it can. Uh, Bran has often called me Cup for short, and that is fine. I'm not concerned. But the full name is translated to the common emptying cup. It is supposed to mean a cup that is becoming useful. Somebody that's learning and developing. For example. So the question I have for the people who are here is what do we hold? What is our purpose as a group rather than our goal? 
the goal of a cup full of water is to be drank, but a goal of a cup, the purpose of a cup is not necessarily only to be drank. Well, the purpose of a cup is to hold something. Sure. So what is the purpose of our group? <laughs> well, I didn't expect this, but that's all right. Yeah, you apparently. asked what the purpose of our crew was? <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess says to kill the undead dragon. No, Mora. <laughs> that's our goal. That's what you do with a f- cup full of water. What is our purpose? To destroy all evil. Okay. How does how does an object destroy evil? Uh, by hitting it really hard until it stops being evil. Okay. <laughs> and how? And how does something recognize evil when it is? How does an object choose which? evil to strike? How does it choose to strike something? Uh, because it's evil? Because it's evil. So Brian will say, you know, I've traveled with uh, and in this case, Mrs. Cup, now for a... Um, I'm not married. <laughs> Miss, <laughs> Miss Cup. <laughs> up for uh, for a while now and um, we've had these discussions before I would pose to you since there are four of us sitting in, in this circle that there would be four definitions of what our purpose is okay um, getting trying to bore down to the what it, what you might call the true purpose would be, I don't know if, uh, if I want to use difficult, hmm. but it would be more challenging than, than each person having their own, each person has their own viewpoint. Isn't that true, Hellion? It is, but at the same time, we should, the group still has a purpose. Uh, you can see that Morgath was in deep thought and almost interrupting Hellion. He goes, I got it. And then he realizes that you were talking and says, oh, uh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) It's fine. Uh, The point is that just because we as individuals have purposes, it doesn't mean the group can't also have a purpose. I would say that a, a single person finding their purpose is impossible. A group finding its purpose uh, like finding the purpose of grass back in two minutes. is difficult. Okay. Finding the purpose of grass may be impossible, but finding the purpose of grass woven to make a basket, it's a basket. Fran has spoken of this goal, and I agree with him on many things uh, on completing the goal. But I've had difficulties with him in the past, and I suspect I'll have difficulties with you both as well. So I want to know what the purpose of the group is. I do. I would like to know. Morgath looks around carefully as nobody is talking and says, One of the ways to tell if something is evil is if it kills innocent people. Brilliant. (laughs) (laughs) Orgas seems very satisfied with himself. (laughs) Oh, I'm glad I'm not playing. (laughs) Cup says that was a fun. uh, That's a fun line to run with. (laughs) Cup says um, so. (laughs) So, am I innocent? Uh. Okay. Let's see here. Yes, I think. <laughs> mm. Okay, so first off, the address is 5749 
Cherry Stone. Uh, Charles, you made one very him. well, <laughs> by the way. Yes, he just made himself. Yeah. I just did. <laughs> it's a freak. It was all of his personal information out. Well, it's not his as much as I don't think it was his as much as maybe a uh, property he saw, he's selling. But yeah. either way, it didn't need to put out out yeah. there is all. And I know he's busy with the way that came about. We all know that. We heard it. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, Cup then turns to Hellion and says, um, what do you think the purpose of the group is since you seem to understand that? Uh, Hellion, did you see the message I sent you? No, I did not. But go. You can go ahead and answer it. I just wanted to make you aware that I sent you one. Uh, yeah, give me one second. I'll uh, take a look at it in just one minute. Uh, Hello, and I'll say, well, the purpose of the group is to enable the development of the individuals that make up that group. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if that's for every group, but I'm willing to accept it for ours. So what did I just miss? Uh, you giving out your address on uh, the <laughs> Yeah, I'll record a video. No, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cup asked, has been asking people individually what oh. the purpose of the group is um, and has and mentioned you know, finding an individual's purpose may be impossible, but finding a group's purpose seems more reasonable and gave an example. Um, Morgrath is uh, simple and straightforward answers as usual. But Hellion actually gave a good one, so you go ahead and repeat that if you'd like, Ryan. Uh, yeah, Hellion's answer was that the purpose of the group was to enable the development of the individuals that make up that group. Morgrath has his hand raised. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's up, Morgrath? What's the difference between a purpose and a goal? I don't get it. A goal is something you want to achieve. A purpose is... How you achieve it. Yeah. So your goal is to destroy all evil. Um, the way you're going to do that is by becoming more powerful, right? Well, no, them. the way to destroy all evil is to destroy all evil. <laughs> he said hitting things very hard. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I suppose to reach a goal, using the goal itself as the method is the most complete way, but also something we can't really reach. It's already hard enough to understand who's innocent and who's evil. So is the method like a sub goal? You do it first and then you get to the goal? Yeah. Or perhaps some goals. Many. So I think our uh, a purpose, let me say it like this, a purpose is which something is done or created or why something exists or which something exists. Uh, what it exists for, perhaps. Right. What does it exist for? Um, so the purpose, one might say, and, and this is just a crude example, the purpose of a sword is to cut things, be that a rope or a, a beast or, or, you know, you could use it for other purposes. It was made for a specific purpose purpose uh, so as far as our group purpose I think and I think Morgrath kind of hit it on the head in something that um, Hellion has, has also talked about 
that we have come together to better ourselves and, or to better our pot potential. Um, and I might say to try and better the world. The world is a big place. I am, I know what our goals are. <clears throat> I think we agree on most of them. I just want to know how we're going to get there. So you want to know our method then? Morgoth has his hand raised again. <laughs> Morgoth, you don't need to raise your hand to participate. But it's hard to interrupt people. All right. So just wait for them to finish and then you talk. <laughs> mm. I'm not very good at judging those gaps. Oh. So if raising your hand makes it easier for you. Uh, Cup, what, is, what do you think the purpose is or should be? You've asked everybody else. Good question. <laughs> For a lowly barbarian, he's coming up with good questions. That's right. And good answers, too. Yeah. Smash evil with the hammer. Um, <laughs> I'm, sh I'm sure his brain is hurting right now. That's right. <laughs> Cup he's expanding says, to new horizons as the conversation progresses. Cup says, my purpose out in this world is to understand the teachings I was taught in context to see what the world is like out here rather than in there um, to apply what I've learned um, but the purpose of this group has caused some difficulties in the past and I don't know what our skills are or what our sub goals our pre goals to reach the goals are or anything well I, I think I think what you're looking for is our method um, I feel like a method is something you decide, whereas a purpose is something you cannot change. Vargas well, says, wait, I've got it. This is like a war planning session. I, all right, I got it. Everything seems to have clicked for him. He says, all right, the, the, the mission is to destroy the undead dragon. So right now we're deciding how we're going to get there and how we're going to find the undead dragon and kill it, right? Right. Right. Do we know where the undead dragon is? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not exactly. Oh. We, we do have an idea. Okay. So that means the first objective is to find out where the undead dragon is. Why? Because we have to go kill it. We don't need to find the dragon. Wait. I can't hit it if I can't find it. What? What? How do we... How do we kill it if we can't find it? Well, if find the up. dragon finds us, then you will be able to find it very easily. <laughs> like, the dragon seems to be following these guys around, right? Yes. So, eventually, it's going to find us again? Probably. The Hell biggest yeah. issue we've had in this particular case is that we have can't win. It's hard to hit a dragon that flies, for example. Hell yeah. Okay, so we're employing yeah. guerrilla tactics. To weaken it until we're strong enough to kill it. How do we weaken it from the ground if it's in the air? Uh, <laughs> throw something at it. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, catapults. Catapults go really far. I think Morgoth. Hell yeah. Give me a perception check with disadvantage. Yeah, this seems reasonable. <laughs> Who? Hell yeah. Yep. Using the stats for the. Yes. Yeah. 
four versus Subaru, which is uh, different. I didn't mean to interrupt, but the, this may be pertinent here. Uh, go, go on with your philosophy. It's like, I didn't mean to interrupt. Also, by the way, roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Because <laughs> um, I think the dragon and the dragon destruction is possibly a goal, but not our main goal. Wait, what? I thought that was the main goal. What, our, what else are we doing? Our, our, main goal, our main goal is to stop this, this uh, quote unquote old god, chaos, from coming back into this world. I'm pretty sure killing a dragon is easier than killing a god, so I think we should I, do I the did dragon not first. say. <laughs> I did not say kill a god. I said stopping a god. All right. I still think killing a dragon is easier than stopping a god. I say we kill the dragon first. <laughs> yeah, but you see, this is the difference between goals and purpose. The current goal is to kill the dragon because the purpose is to stop the god. Okay. Which or means... The, the purpose... I guess the purpose is the aim for the goal, the reason that you're trying to achieve that goal. Sure. Yes. Okay. I can accept that. Uh, guys, we have a problem. What's the problem? The, the river's uh, blocked by a dam about hundred, about a thousand feet ahead. Oh, is this an ambush dam or just one that we have to spend <laughs> laborious hours cutting open with an axe? Uh, probably the second, although possibly the first. <laughs> What's wrong? The river is then. Uh, blocked. Seems to be unintentional. It's more like a log dam than anything else. But... Okay. Well, we'll have to deal with that when we get up close to it. How much, how much time it's do we have? It's not that far away. I'll turn to the people who are rowing or whatever and say, hey, uh, can you stop the boat from moving forward? There's a log jam ahead. <sighs> the, all right. Uh, Y'all go and take a round to say something or, or doing something, and then I'll have them react. All right. Um, uh, Brian will get up, take a look around uh, to make sure that uh, no one's going to try and jump us. Well, Brian is ready for the ambush. Give me a give me a perception check. More Grant, if you're doing a similar, give me a perception check. All right. Cup is looking to see if there's a way to get to shore and start moving the log, but in general is starting by uh, letting uh, the people on the crew know. All right, and, slow down uh, and head toward the bank if needed. They're. Uh, they uh, they ask why, and then they hear there's a log jam up ahead, and uh, and they, and they're trying real hard to slow the ship uh, down. Uh, as far as that, the captain hollers out, "Put your backs into it, men! We just had this uh, craft of ours repaired. We don't need another." <laughs> trip to the repair shop or uh, we'll not make any profit. <laughs> uh, get us near the shoreline uh, close to the close to the log jam. And about the time that you get to the uh, and they'll work hard at it. I mean, they're straining. They're working because they're pushing against a couple actually force. move to the front of the the very front of the boat in case like the ship's about to hit it. Cup can kind of like push something. Um, but yeah. and uh, but you'll be able to make uh, make it to shore. Uh, uh, it takes you from the thousand feet ahead that uh, Hellion was able to foresee to where you're about a hundred feet away where. It finally fighting currents and stuff uh, make it to shore. Okay, All right. sounds good. 
Uh, Heli um, will go and retrieve the painting from the roof and uh, hand it to Tut and say, uh, uh, this is for you. Okay. Uh, Tut will take it. I've uh, been looking for the painting and I have found it. If you give me a minute, I will post a picture of the painting. Uh, you guys can continue. I need to. Yeah, a couple probably leave the painting along with some of his bag, some of her bags, um, and make her way onto the shore, just see if uh, she can't <clears throat> start working on the block, uh, the the log that's blocking the river. All right. Morgrath will follow Cap to assist with the logs. Yeah, Bran as well. All right. Uh, Helium is just going to keep watch. Like she's never near strong enough to actually even think about helping out with this. And, uh, I repeat mean, that, uh, repeat that, Helium. Uh, she's going to keep watch unless they specifically ask her to help. Uh, I can use cantrips to help move it, I guess, thinking about it. Uh, actually, maybe that's what she'll do. Uh, is make sure everybody's clear, and then in the middle of this, just cast Shatter. I'll see if she can just smash the logs out of the way. Hmm. Ooh. Well, that's one way to do it. Well, maybe. Um, as, as far as that. Uh, okay, yeah. So, you, uh, you guys are moving on up. You get to about 20 feet from it. Uh, unless you're going to take something prior to the 20 feet that you're going to do. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I, I, I'll move up to it to try to move it and such. All right. Um, I shall help where possible under the direction of Cup or Bran. All right. Give me an initiative roll. Yeah. Sixteen. Oh, look, right. free squirrel. Huh? And wow, there's a squirrel contaminating all my, all that goop I want. Oh, that. Let me move that over there. Uh, what was uh, what was um, more grass? Uh, Fifteen. Okay. Um, who has the better decks? Uh, Cup has eighteen decks. Okay. I don't know if. More wrath is higher than that, but I have a modifier of two. Okay, well, I know where I'm putting more ground. <laughs> and and, uh, and let me double check here. Ooh, that sucks. Let's see here. Man, I, I get cool ideas, but I need to check them out better. Oh, that ain't too bad. All right. <laughs> I did better than I thought. All right. Um, Hellion, you were staying back on the ship, correct? <laughs> uh, no, not as such. She's just not going to actually physically help out with the log. Uh, okay, well, but how far I, I need to know how far back you're staying. Uh, probably 15 to 20 feet behind the others. Uh, she'll kind of move up. She All needs right. to be within range to cast Shatter, but Shatter has a range of 60 feet, so I think I've just said that without even looking at it. Oh uh, yeah, it does have a range of 60 feet. Okay, cool. Alright, so you're staying about 20 feet behind the others. Yep. Okay. Ooh. Let's see here. 
and uh, you guys were moving up the 20 feet, correct? Cup. Yeah, Cup was willing to get close. And to try more to grass. Up. And was Brian doing that? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, that makes it easy for me. So what is this? Is it crawling towards us or? No, but when you get at 20 feet, all of a sudden you see three tentacles jump up out at you. And let's see here. Yeah, roll that beam footage. And I don't think, I don't think a 10, a 15 or a 14 hits any of your armor classes, does it? No. Mm -hmm. uh, 15 could hit my armor class. All right. Um, how about more grass? Uh, it depends on which one's directed towards me. Which armor AC, class? AC 15. All right. Uh, roll me a D. Uh, a D4, and you'll have three, four. And I'll, I'll use that knowledge to make the assessment. Uh, is it something that I can true? Like, Morgrath would be happy with getting hit if it would prevent somebody else from getting hit. Well, it possibly could stop uh, <coughs> when, uh, somebody else getting hit. These are coming out pretty quick, unexpected. Okay, if you don't mind, I'll choose three, four then, if possible, to uh, have uh, Morgath will take the blow instead of somebody else. All right, I'll go with that. That's a player's choice. So, all right, um, take um, twelve points of bludgeoning damage. So noted. And uh, give me a. DC, okay, there's the DC save uh, on being grappled. Uh, so a is this like a, check. so it's a strength check or strength yep. save? Uh, for strength save, we have 16. All right, you're not grappled. Fantastic. Uh, if it fails, it takes that and that okay that ends its actions brand you're next up you see these this tentacle shoot out for you you see a tentacle shoot out for uh cup and you see one shoot out and hit uh more ground so as a bonus action I'm going to put my Hexblade curse on this creature. Oh, okay. Uh, can I swing at one of the tentacles with my sword? I don't see why not. Okay. I, I, I hit the dirt. <laughs> How do you hit the dirt? Let's see here. Damn, that was a crappy roll. <laughs> you uh, you hit. Excuse me? You made a hit. I hit it? Yes, you did. But the With nine? a natural one? I see a nine. Yeah, and this was all my modifications. One plus eight. Oh, you rolled an actual crit. I rolled an actual one. Okay. Uh, That's what okay. I mean by hit the but I do get I do get two attacks, so Oh, well, give me a percentage dice. Okay. The second one, if you didn't roll a one, will hit. My percentage is 39 on a fumble. Okay. Let's see here. Fumble, fumbles. 39. Roll up your damage and uh, go ahead and roll me a D4. Three, four is more ground. You've got to be joking. Nope. I rolled a four. All right, so it goes to more grass. Uh, what's uh, what's your damage? Nineteen points of damage. Nineteen. 
Is so that including the, Hexblade's curse? Because I don't think that would transfer to me. No, that would not transfer to you. Um, let's see here. So half of that would be nine. So just real quick, was the Hexblade's curse worth a plus four for you? Um, uh, so? Hexblade's curse is a three, three extra points. So take away three. Okay, the roll itself has a plus four for charisma, plus one for magic, and four for mod. Um, so I don't know what that mod is referring to then. Give me a second. Pull up. Okay, so it's 2d6 plus my charisma. Um, what is that other plus four in there for? I assumed it was because of the hex blades curse, but if it's only a plus three, that doesn't make sense. Maybe you typed it in wrong when you were typing out the thing. But uh, more graph, you'll take 13 points of slashing damage. Okay. I'll work on it. Is that 13 including the minus three from not being the target of Hexblade? You no, know, it's, it's 13. And I'm sorry. Morgath kind of looks at you that he's like, <laughs> why did you hit me? Well, the tentacle was hitting hitting you and I tried to hit the tentacle. <laughs> <laughs> all right, is that all that brand? Is that all? Is that all? Did my second hit hit the tentacle? Yes, it did. I told you. Oh, then fourteen on the um, on the tentacle. Four. Well, Brad feels guilty. He successfully bloodied Morgrath. Something that a monster, aside from a half giant, while Morgrath was level one, has yet to uh, successfully do. <laughs> All right. Flashes through Morgrath to hit the tentacle. <laughs> All right. All right. I got and it. Then. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh. Okay. Um, give me. No, I, I'm trying to figure out how to do this mechanic. That's all um, on this, uh, but uh, that's fine. The brand, we'll, I'll let that go, and I'll look at this. You notice some goo on your uh, sword, though, as as far as that. That everything brand's doing. Yes. Cup, you're up. Cup. All right. Well. Cup has a wide variety of options to any circumstance. And what Cup does in this circumstance is says, uh, Ooze, have you slain any innocents recently? Are you, is that skeleton in your body an evil person? And then attacks it <laughs> before it responds. <laughs> oh, I know, I, got, I know where I got the plus four now. Um, Three points is from uh, my Hexblade's Curse, and I got a invocation, um, improved pack weapon, which makes it a, a plus one magical weapon, yep. and, yeah. and it can cast uh, my spells through it. So that makes, that's what makes the plus four. Yeah, you, it should be a plus three, though, because it's already including the plus one. Yeah, you already have plus one damage. for magic listed, so... Like unless you have like so uh, the you're double stacking it right now. Um, here let, let me look again. <laughs> Go yeah. on, guys. I'll, I'll come back. Yeah, you're good. He's you're gonna good. get her. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I I kick this thing and I critically hit. Uh, <laughs> you critically hit. Okay. I roll the um, twenty. Okay, roll me some percentage. Uh, Thirty nine is my percentage. Oh. <sighs> Mighty 39. Yes, let's see how much damage you do to this beastie. And 39. And oh, roll your normal uh, damage is 
far as that. Uh, outside, okay. of, outside of that, it is... Uh, let me double check and see if it's immune to that. Yes, it is. Okay. So you you can't do that to it. So uh, All you right. do the double, your double yep. damage. Uh, 11 points of damage. Okay. And, and I got more attacks than that. So I'm going to oh, make them. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh. Hold oh. on here. Well, I'm just taking off hit points here. Um. Oh. Uh, your uh, what did you hit him with? I kicked it with my foot. Kick, okay, take seven points of uh, acid damage. Ow! That's why I told you to hold up. You would have noticed that. Definitely noticed that with the first kick. Seems quite reasonable. Um, <clears throat> to give you um, time to adjust. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't want to kick it again. Um, uh, so I'll make <clears throat> a, another attack with a dart to see if that does anything. Oh, okay. Um, and I believe oh, it's just unarmed strikes. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I'll try to throw a dart at it and see if that helps. <clears throat> okay, roll the hit. 12. Actually, it is a ranged attack, so I have disadvantage. 12 still. You're 20 feet away. Oh, am I? Okay. Never yeah, mind. because uh, you're, you're not right up on it. It's the one. Uh, it like lashed out with its tentacles, trying to distance yes. it. It's good to know. Um, but yeah, uh, so. Uh, Eight piercing damage, and this is non magical. Okay. And does that uh, seem to affect it in any particular way, or does it just like kind of gloop and, and it's done? Your dart kind of sinks on into it. But eight, uh, it, it, you don't, you don't notice anything greatly, greatly done to it. Let's put it that way. Okay. Um, then. As a bonus action, um, this is a fun monster. Yeah, I don't think there's. Uh, <laughs> I use my cup to start scooping it up. <laughs> um, nope, uh, that's all I do. That's that's I'll, that's all. I'll, I'll be fine with that. Oh, okay. It takes his bonus action to think about what he needs to do to defeat an opponent like this. More graph. This thing hit you with its tentacle, tried to wrap around you, but you shrugged it off. And well, if my allies also damaged me, I'm not going to be able to stay in the fight long. Uh, <laughs> and it's too far away for me to claw. Uh, so I will just take the dodge action back up 30 now, feet, uh, pull out a javelin, and uh, that's now, the end of my turn. Now, what I would say is since the tentacle came out and tried to wrap around you, you could claw the tentacle uh, as an option if you so cho chose. Uh, no, nah, that's fine. I'll just take the dodge action with my action back up 30 feet and then I'll pull a javelin out. Okay. Up to the top of the order. Hellion, you see this action uh, all take, take place. Three tentacles jump up out of this thing from the water. One hits Morgrath. The others miss, but yet you saw an ally kick the kick the tentacle and uh, come back saying ow and adjusted and the others yeah. has a little bit of uh, some kind of goo on their sword so uh, we can't see the main body of this thing at the minute right uh, it's if I'm not mistaken pretty difficult um, to detect on that uh, where with where it's at. You see the stuff that's kind of in it. Uh, yeah. but it is moving. So, Sorry, uh, did you say I can see the stuff that's in it? Yeah, you can kind of see the stuff that's in it. The, like a dart. And, uh, we'll say that squirrel and the helmet and the sword. And some so the helmet. Wood uh, and stuff. That's fine. That, that's excellent. 
Uh, something kind of as close to the center of it as I can get. Uh, possibly the helmet or the sword, something that's kind of in the middle. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast Heat Metal. Okay. Uh, see how it likes that. I'm just going to burn the light on the inside. Um, so it has to be a manufactured metal object. So let's go with the helmet. Um, that seems oh, more like okay. a manufactured metal object for me. Yeah. Um, any creature in physical contact with the object takes 2d8 fire damage. All right. And I can apply my... Give me the damage. <laughs> and I think this upcast, it does. And as a warlock, I don't really have a choice. Okay. Uh, just double check how that feature works because I'm not actually okay. thinking maybe when I uh, hit with an attack I can add my uh, okay for now we're just going to assume it doesn't apply uh, it's 18 points of fire damage okay great uh, now uh, let me double check when this reapplies I know I can use a bonus action to make it reapply uh, there is a save involved here somewhere. Um, so if it's holding or wearing the object and takes damage, it has to succeed on a con save or drop the object if it can. Uh, but given that the helmet's in the middle of it, you may struggle with that. Uh, as long as it's in contact with the object, it has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks until right. the start of my next turn. All right, all right. Um, bum, 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 bum. Yes, I love it. I love it. I've been uh, waiting to use the spell with this character. It's quite such a good spell. <laughs> and <laughs> if the DM doesn't give you things with metal, it's just not useful. I gave you things with all kinds of stuff. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> right here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> there it is. Found it. Perfect. So is that it? Uh, yes, okay. that is that is everything. Yeah. All right. I guess actually she'll position herself between the thing and um, Morgoth, seeing that Morgoth's uh, quite badly hurt. I am like 50 feet away from me, so it's going to have to come out of the water if it wants to fight me, which so, is my plan. Or it has 50 foot long tentacles. You're doing well. Um, well I'll shorten them. Uh, she'll kind of move. She doesn't move much closer to Morgoth. She's probably still kind of. Um, you move 30 feet back, and she was 20 feet behind you, so. Uh, she's ten feet ahead of Morgoth still, but she kind of moves herself in between the two of them. All right. So, so your Morgoth moved back twenty at forty, so you're at thirty feet away from. Me. Uh, yeah, that's fine. No, I'm just running through the math of what was going on down, so I have the right thing. All right, its turn, and uh, what it will do is it all of a sudden that helmet comes flying out and a bunch of ooze and stuff expels as a, as a geyser of gas and bones and shards of blades and such go pushing forward. I'll need a dexterity save from Bran and Cup. 14. Hey. All right, that sucks. Uh, <laughs> you'll take uh, 11 points of poison damage, each of you, and you'll take 11 points of piercing damage. Ow. Um, I'm only going to take eight. Okay. Uh, But the, uh, what's it? Uh, yeah. And it will go ahead and, right at the moment, uh, let's see here. Eh. It will move up 20 feet closer to you guys. So it, it should be right in front of uh, more grass, uh, not more grass, but the uh, <laughs> cup. And Bran. So Bran, your move. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to swing at it twice. Okay. I'm going to... And okay, I'm going to first. I'm going to see if I'm going to, if I'm going to hit. <laughs> that hits. Well, a twelve. Okay, a twelve will hit. Um. And I am going to thunder smite it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17, 17 points of, of damage. Well, uh, yeah. This is from a magical weapon, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then uh, it makes a um, makes a saving throw under smite. It makes a saving throw on a strength saving throw or be pushed 10 feet away and knocked prone. All right. And you said that was 17 points of damage? Yes. Okay. Do that. And that will go there. Okay, and you push it back ten feet, so it's <clears throat> ten feet, uh, ten feet away from you. And um, cut. It rolled over. <laughs> no, it didn't. If it pushed back, it's not prone. Whatever but, that means. Uh, no, it's not not prone if it's immune to prone. Ah, never mind. <laughs> The, the goop is goes from one side of the goop to the oh, other yeah. side of the goop. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that was my first hit, right? I believe so. Yeah, it was. So I'm going to move up, and I'm going to hit it again. For 18, 19, 20. No, oh, I'm sorry. Just 18 points. All right. And your sword, you're hitting it with, right? Uh, yes. Your sword uh, is magical, taking damage. Okay. Uh, hey, oh, hey, I took. Uh, you keep track of that. It's uh, fourteen points of acid damage. Okay. Uh, eight, and, uh, I was writing that damage down over here to take off it, its damage. <laughs> So it's 18, so I got to get that right as far as that. So, okay. There we are. Is that it? Yep. Cup. All right. <clears throat> Cup kind of like wobbles for a moment as the poison seems to be affecting him pretty bad. Her, I suppose. Um, uh, and so she will. will uh, Hmm. Yeah, bonus use a key point to bonus action disengage. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then attack it's twice ten. with darts. It's it's ten feet away from you, but yeah. I was able to attack further than that before. Yeah, so I know. I'm again. just I'm just trying to put it in the perspective for you. I'm not saying two more darts to its form. I was gonna okay. say face, but you know. Okay. It's ooze face. <laughs> I have a 24 to hit and a 19 to hit. They hit. For a total of 10, 15 non-magical piercing damage. All right. Um, and then a uh, couple move back uh, 40 feet. And you'll notice that the dart that you threw in there before is uh, kind of getting smaller fairly quick. All right as far as that. And more graph. Uh, all right, how far am I away from the creature? 30 feet? Uh, 40, you got uh, Hellion in front of you, 10 feet. <clears throat> okay, uh, I will step 10 feet closer so that I'm 30 feet away and then chuck two javelins at it. 
All right. Throw those babies. Uh, well, not super impressive. Uh, we have a 11 and then a 18. They both hit. All right, great. Are they magical? No. Uh, we have a total of 16 points of damage from two javelins. All right. You said 16, correct? That is correct. All right. So that makes that. Hell yeah. Uh, anything else that you're doing, uh, Morgrath? Uh, yes, I'm then going to back up some more so that I am back to, uh, we'll say, 50 feet away from it. <laughs> All right. And uh, Hellion, <clears throat> you're up. Uh, yes, I'm very upset because uh, that was my last spell slot, but it just completely by <laughs> Um So I'm going to Eldritch Blast it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We have two beams of Eldritch Blast now. Uh, Eight. The first one is a 19 to hit. That hits. Um, second one is an 18 to hit. That hits. Uh, excellent. What's the damage? Uh, eight and six is 14. 14 and... Charisma modifier twice is 24, and if you want, is 27, of which 3 is fire and 24 is force. All right. And, uh, let's see here. Do the math. That hurts my head. And it is looking in rough shape. And it will retreat into the water. Sounds like they get a uh, attack of opportunity. Why are you up on top of it? I was. Go ahead. I I thought you I thought you were uh, pushing it away from me. Well, I did, but then I moved up again. Remember? Okay. Because that made a second of that. Yep. No problem. Yep. And it takes 19 points of uh, from a uh, sword. Okay. And let's see here. And your sword takes seven more points of damage. And that's made out of iron, right? Uh, it's actually, um, it's a weapon that was created by my... Um, my uh, my pact. Oh, okay. So it's just don't don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, no, no. I here again. I'm, it's. I all, know. I'm, I'm trying to get the. Uh, okay. It's looking rough, but. Uh, okay. As as far as 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 far as that, uh, I mean it's. Okay. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, not much that's going to be there for a lot of strength or good, but yeah. I understand. Okay. Um, so, Brian. Yes? You're up. I just did 19 points of damage to it. Yeah, but that was an attack of opportunity. Oh, oh, is it... Uh... Uh, where is it? It's in the water. It moved 20 feet away from me. Can I see it? Is it at the edge of the water? No, it's actually in the water. And if you want to try to see it, give me a perception check with uh, disadvantage. I don't think there'd be a whole hell of a lot I could do to it anyway. Total total cross, baby. That's what I was thinking too. What was it? I rolled a five. Ah, uh, you don't see it. And that will take up you. Cup, 
Uh, uh, um, I'm well, gonna movement, so in I'm case attacking. I'm attacked, I will retaliate. Okay. Um, cop. Well, as I said, cop's pretty hurt. So, um, this creature came out of the water, but didn't like come off from the log. Correct. No, you would sub, uh, you would uh, surmise that maybe you were seeing parts of the log and then the uh, the other parts of woods and debris uh, were stuff that were stuck in it that you were seeing at the time. Uh, would have been this creature. Uh, fair enough. Um, so without oh, do I have rope? Hold on. Hold on. I didn't, but I do. Uh, so, uh, Cup will, from a distance, maybe continue to keeping a distance from the river the same as if, you know, not moving any closer to the, to the creature, um, but will basically move closer to the log while doing it um, and uh, will kind of look at it does it look like it fell from fell from this side of the riverbank or from the other side of the riverbank the log yeah uh you really don't know it looked like it got it drifted down river drifted down fair enough and got um, uh, locked on in on then uh, what cup's gonna do is just basically mm -hmm. take the take her action to pull the rope out uh, and start messing with it but um, all right that's all more ground. Uh, I shall draw javelin and uh, ready next to throw it if this weird creature returns to where I can see it. All right. And I'll give uh, Hellion one last go if or so. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can see it under the water. All right, uh, give me a perception with disadvantage. Uh, 20. A 20? Okay, I will have to roll on that one then. There we go. And it's still to it. Uh, you can barely make out what you, what you think may be this creature. All right, great. I already lost it. All right, roll the hit. Uh, we have a 26 and a 13 to hit. All right. Uh, go hit and describe your what you think is your kill. Uh, well, we have uh, 27 points of force damage. Not going right. to bother with fire because it's underwater. Uh, so she fires Dordrich Blast into it and hopes that it gets destroyed. Like, it's difficult to make out. So Yeah, that's why I say that you believe. Yeah. She kind of calls out, I think I got it. Okay. Maybe. So. Oh, good job. Bram will throw his sword on the ground, and with a wave of his hand, it disappears. Okay. He's then going to take a he's then going to take a minute, and a brand new sword will appear. Okay, no problem. And he will sheath it. It's uh, a brand uh, new sword. Yes. Ta -da! Wow! Yay! Pun. Yes. Yes. And. Uh, Morgrath looks forlornly at the melted remains of his normal javelin. <laughs> and Cup says, uh, "We're gonna need to still need to get that log out of the way, um, and is in the process of uh, setting up a knot uh, to try to wrap around the tree and pull on it." All right. You'll be able to accomplish that. Give me. Uh... Give me a, a not tying skill with sleight of hand. 
would uh, weavers tools be appropriate here or proficiency with weavers tools no it's not quite not quite the same thing the weavers tools the uh, proficiency you're actually using a like a loom or something that's true uh, where this is you're trying to get around it tie it uh, kind of sleight of hand i think fits it better I and mean, i i got pretty high sleight of hand too so oops 13 13 yep you're having a difficult time getting around this uh, log and like that but you'll you'll be able to get a decent knot on it you think fair enough i will help pull couple turn to um turn to Hillian and say, you had some magic for this? Uh, I did. <laughs> ah, fair. <clears throat> so we can't right, pull it? <laughs> Cup goes, all right, I, on three. One, two, pull. <laughs> and we try to pull it out of the water enough to get the boat around later. All right, and it's uh, it's about the five o'clock in the afternoon. By the time you're done moving the log to where it got uh, when you were coming on down the river, uh, and with your philosophy class, and then noticing uh, being noticed on that and and such. Sure. So, uh, the, and the captain will uh, look uh, to you guys and say, do you want to go on or do you want to camp? You all right? You, um, you, ultimately, you, Captain, are you going to continue rowing through the night or are you planning on pulling over? Well, I'd like to make as much headroom as I can on, on this river. It's a tough task to make. Oh, um, before I forget, uh, Brian wants to take a look at this junk that was expelled. Okay. You'll find a helmet that was eaten up pretty good. Uh, you'll, you'll find some bones and some teeth, a skull, um, a couple stones. Uh, okay, so it sounds like junk. Oh, for the most part, uh, there's nothing that was expelled that had any innate value. Okay, Morgath, who has just um, finished bandaging his wounds to stop the bleeding, says, oh. uh, "I'm fine. <laughs> uh, if you guys want to keep going, I we can do that, uh, or we can camp. Either one is okay with me." I'm so sorry, Morgath. <laughs> Morgath says, uh, "Don't worry. I'll just maintain a ten foot distance from you in combat from now on to avoid uh, similar instances." You said slay innocent people, not hit them with their great sword, right? <laughs> uh, it's five o'clock. I mean, I suppose we could go for a couple more hours. I mean, the question is, does he row? Does do they row through, through the night or not? Uh, well, uh, they're so, uh, he's saying the men are kind of weary. I'd like to give them a rest. Uh, okay. A little further down, maybe. All right. T two more hours, and then we will make camp. Does that sound good to everybody? Fair enough. Did we lose somebody? No. Not here. No, I, I was just looking up on the Zoom screen. I, it it fl flickered uh, almost like when someone dropped out. So I, that's why I asked that. Um, all right, you'll go the two hours. Things are somewhat uh, uneventful. They push over to the same side of the shore <clears throat> as... Uh, that you did, and uh, they'll drop an <coughs> uh, drop anchor <coughs> on there and put a uh, gangplank down. So uh, 
folks can leave the ship to take care of duties and such. What, uh, what are y'all going to be doing? Well, Cup, besides the rest scene, is going to be like, so, as we were saying, <laughs> like, just... <laughs> well, now I have a better excuse to not do anything. In <laughs> I know uh, Bran wants to just take a look around the uh, forest line uh, to see if he sees anything suspicious. Uh, the forest line is really quite a ways back. Okay. Well, that's, that's uh, even better. Uh, you're on the, gra uh, on the grass plain. Uh, let me bring that up so it gives you a better idea. So just to let you know, yeah, we should do three hexes uh, per day of travel. Yeah. What was that? We should be able to get two or three hexes of travel on the um, on the waterway. Well, you're pushing for, for, yeah. you're pushing against current. True. It also depends on the scale of the hex. Yeah, they're each of those miles. hexes, if I remember correctly, are one day's worth of walking. But that yeah. was on the other map, so I'm not sure. Well, it's the same. Thirty. Uh, each of those hexes are thirty miles. Yeah. As far as that, uh, let me get this back over here. That's the only thing I don't like with the zoom is when I drop it to minimize the picture, it uh, goes right back down to its original. And then I Borgas, Alaska. Okay. So where are we going right now? We are going, uh, hang on a sec. You're going, oops, I just, I just logged out of the roll 20. There's oh. an old, um, like a temple uh, that we are going to. Uh, and it has, oh, there it is. We're going yeah, to the city that is known as Blurry McBlurison. No. <laughs> uh, Kamizna? Oh, wow. Let me, I'll take and I'll move it. Uh, yeah. Where uh, where your end is, hopefully, is someplace up around here. Yeah, the lost ruins, right? Yeah, because we believe there was some connection between that and the box. If I remember correctly, Can't yeah. Remember. Well, there's a book. We're looking for the book of of life. What's the book of life? Sure. <laughs> it's what the box is supposed to hold. Yeah. Well, basically, right. it's a magical book that was written before the uh, actual creation of things. So it's been around for like forever. Um, apparently it's so powerful, they created this box that I've, we've been carrying around to put it in. So we're going to where the book is now? Yes. Okay. And we're taking that because uh, to use it to destroy the dragon? Well, like I was telling you before, the dragon is, is, is they need the book to bring back this god. So if we if we get the book, they cannot use the book. So we don't have to kill the dragon. We just need to stop the god. <laughs> Isn't the dragon evil though? It's undead. We want to kill it the is dragon. Evil. It's our purpose to kill the dragon. Our <laughs> goal is to stop the god. Right. <laughs> I thought it was the only one. Or Great. the goal Can is to be. kill the dragon, and then the purpose is something else. But you get the idea. Can we kill the undead dragon with the Book of Life? Since it's a Book of Life, right? Which is like, doesn't that work on undead? Um, theoretically, there are many magical things in that book, uh, which I'm sure that probably both myself and Hellion would be very interested in. But... Uh, we won't really know what's in it until we get it. All right. Do we know who's guarding the book? Uh, no. Hmm. But I'm sure it's something awful. Do you know specifically where the book is or just that it's at this place in general? Uh, all we have is at 
general. You broke up pretty good on that, Phil. Say it again. Um, all we have is the general idea and location. Okay, so when we get there, you'll just ask people where it is? Well, possibly. Um, we know it's at some kind of like an old ruins. Um, and you'll have to help me, Charles, because my memory is a little foggy. But that's the best way to have it. It's been a long trip. Um, <laughs> but were we, were we looking for a cave? No, that's right. We brought, we, we, we have uh, um, climbers kits. Yeah. So I think we're looking for a cave. Or a subterranean right. hole. Right. Okay. Uh, that seems like a solid plan. Uh, find this place, uh, get book, maybe kill the dragon, and then what are we doing after that? Are we hiding with the book? Well, once we get the book, um, we need to stop, we need to pay an old debt back at the city of Roma, and then we need to go to... Uh, what debt do you have at the city of Roma, and how does it relate to stopping chaos? <laughs> well, um, in order to get the information that we needed, we made a deal with uh, one of the mages there. Um, and so they helped us in, in, in return. Uh, they wanted us to furnish them a one, one spell that is unique. Um, also in Doolin, uh, we need to go talk to the high priest there. He, he's, one, he's the one who helped finish this uh, trip. And um, we're supposed to take the book back to him as well, if I remember right. Wait, they're getting the super secret powerful book and giving it to somebody else? We're not giving it to anybody but ourselves. Now, uh, <laughs> we, might let, we might let them you know, look at it for about a minute. <laughs> And this high priest is someone you want looking at the book? Um, the high priest was going to help us in our next steps after we get the book. He's the one who gave us all the information about this, uh, about the god, about the, um, the dark queen, um, and about the location that we're going to. Have you done any fact checking to know if he is a double agent or not? Um, that's kind of hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't done any double checking on that? Um, to the best of our belief, uh, everything, everything he, he told us, some of the stuff was verified by documents that we had found. And then we had another source. We had a mage uh, that we double checked with. Uh, so we checked with two sources. And both of them basically said the same thing. So the information is true so far, but yes. how sure are you that he's not a double agent playing to get the book? Oh, the uh, the high priest? Yes. Uh, no, I don't think the high priest is. Because I think and believe a lot of things, and I have found out numerous times that I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of people I might suspect, uh, but I don't think the high priest is one of the people. All right, so the plan ends with you taking the book to the high priest and waiting for his instructions on how to further stop the god thing? Uh, basically, yes. As far as you know, though, the only way for the god to come back is with the book. So if we destroy the book or something like that, then it's problem solved and we can dust our hands of the problem. <laughs> Destroying well, powerful magical artifacts isn't as easy as you would think it is. I didn't say yeah. it'd be easy. I just said that would solve the problem. Yeah, we, we, we talked about taking this box and sinking it into the deepest part of the sea or possibly chucking it into a volcano. But uh, as Hellion says, it's destroying an a artifact is not an easy thing. And the problem becomes that 
you throw it into the deepest part of the sea, and what happens is they recruit a triton to go and fetch it. I right, find right. that hiding things doesn't work for Aeron. I've read a couple of stories where that doesn't end well. There was one where there was this ring and it got lost very, very well. And then some dude pounded in a river and started murdering people. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that story. In the end, though, they threw it into a volcano and that's fine. Uh, right, they however, destroyed it and then it solved the problem. In this situation, throwing it into a volcano just means that they have to send a fire on them to fetch it. The other one I read was about this evil lich who hit, I think it was a lich, I don't know, some some powerful spellcaster hid something that they needed to not die inside of the mouth of like an avalith or something in the water. And then this random group of adventurers found the avalith, got it out of its stomach and still killed him. I heard somebody mention lich before. I believe the dragon was supposed to be some sort of lich. Wait, the What's dragon? a lich? Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Liches are skeletons, right? I don't know. Uh, I just heard somebody call it a lich before. Uh, the priest who... Uh, I, now, uh, it, the description that I gave, I did give you when it was... Oh, I'm just going <laughs> to... You, you, have, you have certain knowledge that I wasn't giving anything away. You just reminded me. <laughs> You're good. Um, yeah. Liches are skeletons and avalists are sea monsters, I think. I don't quite remember the story. Right. Well, the dragon we saw was definitely not a full flesh and body. It was more like a bony body. Anyway, I feel... That sounds like a skeleton, and skeletons are liches. Yes, I, I feel like <clears throat> part of the reason we were having this discussion before is because we're not exactly sure... I feel like we don't exactly know what we're doing. <laughs> I agree. It sounds like the quest was given from a uh, holy man, and the quest's end is the holy man? We have been passed by two people who have helped us in the past with the information we were looking for to return with some information from this book. The box holds this book, and as far as I'm aware, and I believe Brad is aware, is the only way to hold this book. That's how powerful it is. Um, Wait, so if I touch it, I'll get incinerated or something? Something like that. How do we get know. into the box then? We're not sure, uh, and that is a good question, but that is part of the reason we were considering destroying the box, is that yes. it would prevent the god from showing up. But because we had agreed to the people who had helped us find this information about the box and about this book and this dragon that was attacking the city um, that's been following us, uh, we instead have decided to go get the book to repay those debts and then possibly find a method to destroy it. Book or box or otherwise. <laughs> Basically double check to see what the information we were given was correct. But the only information we've been given about the book is that it was somewhere up near the Lost Runes in like the mountain range up there. And so we are hoping to head to the nearby city of Kamizna, perhaps some, gain some information of, about it from them, rest there, and generally make our way into the Lost Runes from there. Thorgrath seems deep in thought for a moment. He says, so... It sounds like as long as we hide, but we don't actually have to fight the dragon. We don't have to, to know. We don't have to fight the dragon. This is the difference between a purpose and a method. A, I think the dragon needs to be taken care of. I would be in, a, in agreement with you, and I'm. I would bet that, especially once we get this book. Um, we are going to be very high priority on the uh, dragon's to-do list. Right. Which is why we think, why I, I think that when it comes to methods, perhaps a better choice would be to find ways to fight the dragon before we gain hold of the book so that they can't just take it from us. Yeah, because I have we a would question. have both the book and the box. 
So the- theoretically, this book has just been sitting in a set of ruins. Uh, the dragon's been around for how long? Mm. If it's been around for a while, it seems like the book is safe where it is, since the dragon doesn't have it yet. Might be, but we, we this- still made. We still agreed to get it for them. Well, these people who helped us. Here's part of the problem. Uh, when we first started on this quest, um, we were inexperienced. Um, this dragon's breath has laid waste to men very easily. And so we thought it would be best, at least for now, to avoid the dragon, uh, gain what power that we can, um, and to get to a point where we would have better chances of fighting this dragon. In other words, do all the side quests before you do the the main quest. (laughs) So I would put forward, if our goal is to stop the Chaos God from coming out. That's our goal. And uh, Right, all right. So if if that's the goal, we've established that the dragon needs the book to bring the Chaos God out. Uh, If the dragon hasn't gotten the book yet, I feel like we might be doing the dragon's dirty work if we go get the book. (laughs) <laughs> yes, which is why I think we need to figure out how to defeat the dragon. Luckily, the dragon deci- has decided to keep following us. So, unfortunately, the dragon has decided to keep following us. <laughs> um, I think unless we can determine why the dragon doesn't have the book yet from this place, I don't think we should pick it up because it seems like a like a good job ruining it here a moment. If all we were if all we were trying to do was to prevent the dragon from obtaining the book, then destroying the box would be our first priority. But that's not all we are trying to do. I know it is because Bran likes to take on heavy loads and difficult tasks. <laughs> <laughs> um this high this dark queen. Uh, Cup still has a, this, this question, does the dragon run her or does she run the dragon? And I believe the Dark Queen runs the dragon. Maybe I don't know. The, I don't, I don't, the Dark Queen might run the dragon. I just don't know if the person riding the dragon is the Dark Queen or just somebody the dragon has hired or enslaved or whatever. Um, it it would be a dark good queen, news. If I was a dark queen, I would be I would be riding a dragon. If I was the dark queen, I would have somebody else ride the dragon who pretends to be the dark queen, so that we think we've killed her. That's really smart. Except for the time when when I hit her and Farron hit her with the ballista, she got she took like several major hits and yeah. was still was still up. So, I can get hit by a ballista and I'll still be up. So that means she's not that strong. <laughs> right. Uh, my, my point being, whoever <laughs> was on top of that dragon was no Push actor. Uh, I didn't, an actor doesn't have to be someone who is... An actor doesn't have to be someone who is only <clears throat> good at playing the face. But, uh, <laughs> so, what are your thoughts, Hellion? <laughs> I think we need to pick a like the uncertainty is worse than <laughs> making a wrong decision at this point. Uh, it's better to make a bad decision and commit to it than it is to not make a decision. Well, yeah, we've made a decision. Uh, and I think, you know, I th- I think the high, the dark queen and the dragon are at the temple of temple of something. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't read it; it's too fuzzy. Oh, um, the lost ruins. Oh, well, oh, the oh, the other temple. Oh, the other temple. Yeah. Okay. If you can see on uh, on roll twenty, I think they are at this lost temple right here. Um. Are you talking about this temple? Yes. Or this temple? No, I think they're at the temple of Malin. 
and the reason why I say that that's where army was coming from, um, and that's kind of where the dragon has come from a couple different times, at least in the, in the general direction anyway. Uh, I um, guess my other question is, have we given up on rescuing your friend? Well, unfortunately, Dagger was taken five days ago. And, and apparently, the, yes, I'm sorry. Based on right. the story, they were taken in the opposite, opposite direction that we were going. And five days ago, it's not, it's not like we had a, a hot trail. Right. Um, he's pretty resourceful himself. So we uh, unfortunately, uh, we have to let him fend for himself. So, yeah, if, I, you know, if we, my we are giving yes. up on your phone. Cool. Well, that's fine. At least for now. <laughs> yeah, like, that's fine. You don't need to justify it. I was just asking. Wait, 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 Unless, wait, of course, wait. you feel like you have to justify it yourself, in which case. There's somebody who was part of the party and we're just not going to go rescue. Mm -hmm. can't, it, we can't save the world and save him at the same time. Why not? Because they're in two different directions. Well, no, that's what I was saying earlier. I don't think the, I don't think we need to worry about saving the world because the dragon can't get the book where the book is. So as long as we don't go get the book for the dragon, we can go do something else first. <sighs> Like saving somebody who could help us fight the dragon so that we can kill it before we go get the book. <laughs> I know, at least I believe. <laughs> I, I believe that the dragon has an idea where the book is. We got this this uh, this chest uh, before the dragon had a chance to use it. And, and really, it's not the dragon, it's the Dark Queen. So we put a, we stopped, we sort of stopped their plans to a point when we got this, um, when we got the, the, the chest. Hmm. So if we, we take also have the farther away from the book and get more allies, it seems like we're setting ourselves up for victory. Mm. <laughs> Cup is just looking at Bran like, mm -hmm. oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> the DM is sitting back here and saying, I did envision so many challenges. <laughs> You're the one who set this this shit up. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, he, he set it up. We are derailing it. <laughs> but that is actually the, the, this entire conversation is actually the reason Cup said what he said. <laughs> I've been waiting for a moment because Cup knows so little. <laughs> he needs something to instigate it. The no doing, let, me ask you this, <laughs> let me ask you this question. Why did you retreat from this? water creature uh because i was going to die soon you okay. seemed to have it under control after i wasn't there to get hit anymore uh so i stayed out of range so ultimately uh, and i do apologize for my my, my missed but ultimately you retreated because um and i hate to use the word uh you were not um you could use more, 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 uh, more power, right? Uh, no, because it was in the water, I couldn't get to it, so I figured I'd wait for it to come closer. <laughs> right. So, how do you envision fighting a dragon that can breathe and suck the life right out of you? With lots of friends and by <laughs> not getting breathed on. Okay, uh, Hellion. Will friends help against this dragon? Enough of them might. Like, if you had two or three armies. But would magic help even more? Oh, for sure. 
Okay. Like, once I'm powerful enough, I can just wish it doesn't exist anymore. Wait, so, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is confused. Uh, the ultimate in Mortal Magic is a spell called Wish. I'm not exactly certain, like, I'm not certain on the details, but my understanding is you say, uh, I wish this happens and then it happens. Why don't we just find a wizard to do that and then get rid of the dragon that way? <laughs> Uh, there are very few people alive that can cast that magic. I'm talking single digit. Oh. I suppose if there was an ancient book with filled with ancient magic, it might have that spell. But nobody might... can touch the book, so how can we use it? Well, we have the box that supposedly lets us hold the book. <laughs> I don't know. I can't answer some of those questions. But I do know, even with an army... Of, of ground pounders. <laughs> this undead dragon lay pretty much well on. Wait, I've read a story about how to beat up a dragon like this. If the dragon is undefeatable, you'll simply uh, trap it in its cave and drop rocks on its head until it dies. And then if it doesn't die, it's buried in the cave and then you walk away until it starves. <laughs> I heard an old story. Now, by the way, guys, this is a this is a somewhat uh, true myth, but I heard this the story of this uh, of this greedy dragon that was terrorizing the villagers. So the villagers started bringing gold to it and giving it the, the gold, and they convinced the dragon that it needed to eat the gold to keep the gold safe. So they fed it gold and gold and gold and gold and gold, and it got to the point where it's so fat it couldn't leave the cave anymore, and the villagers were safe. Uh, which is great but we how now know how to beat they... the undead dragon no we don't because undead things don't eat wait they don't it works f it would have worked for any other dragon but this undead dragon <laughs> man that's unfortunate that must be its <laughs> secret power i guess we have to go back to the drop rock side of playing then <laughs> listen let, let's set up camp let's spend the night You know, if you guys want to vote on which way to go, you can vote on which way to go. But <laughs> what, if, I have, what, if I have to walk north, I'm going to walk north. What Cup says is, I have agreed for the sake of the priest to deal with the undead dragon. I think that our goals align there, Bran. Yes, they do. And I would like to continue traveling with you since you have helped me in the past a number of times. But we should consider what we need to do. What's the priority uh, as a group? What is the group's purpose? I also want to go back real quick. There was a companion that we're leaving behind. That's not something I'm comfortable with. This is not something I'm comfortable with either. We don't even know where to look. And and going metagame, he dropped out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> but going back in the game... I mean, out of game, that seems like a problem for the DM. <laughs> out, or, it's a, or it's a problem that the GM gets to leave to the players. Like, that's just how it works. Uh, <laughs> and Morgas, Morgas was saying... And we're not going to know where he is until we start looking. Right. Um, what, Cup, what Cup says is, uh, says is, fortunately, our friend, as Bran mentioned, is capable. And unfortunately, we do have more imp important things to do. So if you, know, you can't leave a friend behind, I understand that. It's an admirable quality, but uh, perhaps consider, well, I will, I'll, I'll talk to you later about it. <laughs> yeah, when we, are, when we are in battle, Morgrath, and you're fighting something or something you know and i'm fighting something ultimately you know 
I'm, I'm aware of you, but I, I got to trust you and trust your abilities to take care of yourself. You know, unless you say you need help or, or do something along those lines to get my attention to where you know, I, can, I can rally you know, help to you. And we were tracking our friend Cup to that very clearing with those bodies of the bags in them. What we thought was Cup, let me, let me say it like that. And we yes, made I that raid. Yeah, and we made that raid um, on the hopes of recovering our friend. But that's when we discovered that they were five days gone. Five days. Down the river to the city of Doolin. Now, Cup is my friend, you know, but the fate of the world is hanging in balance. If I save, if I save Dagger, excuse me, if I save Dagger and the world falls, then Dagger falls. If I save the world, at least Dagger has an opportunity. And I think this is the point we disagree. I don't, I don't think the world see, needs saving right now. The dragon hasn't been able to get the book, so I don't think it will be able to get the book since it's been around longer than we have from what you guys have been saying. The dragon doesn't need the book it. to kill everybody in the world. <laughs> well, no, but it needs it to bring the god out that will kill everybody, right? I thought that's what the... The dragon doesn't need it, the book to kill anybody. The dragon can kill whoever it likes, as far as I can tell. Yeah, it's the Dark Queen. The Dark Queen wants the god to do something. I don't know what. <laughs> okay, so we don't need to worry about the god, because whoever needs the book to summon the god hasn't been able to get it. There is a dragon that does need to die, uh, that we need either more people with, and we need to go do, we need to gather experience so that we can defeat it. Or a magical book that will... Uh, also repay debts that are owed. You know, I'm a, I'm a soldier, or at least, you know, I'm, and get, uh, you guys give me a perception check with all this that's going on. Seems good to me. Fifteen. All right. Nineteen. All right. Uh, six. <laughs> All right. Classic. And more grind. Uh, it's in the roll 20 chat. Everybody else rolled uh, 10. Roll 20 chat. I'm... Oh, okay. I got to tighten my eyes up a little bit. Yeah, I noticed people rolling over there, so I figured I'd put it over there. Okay. That's fine. Um, yeah, uh, let's see here. Cup, anybody hmm. that got above a 15, let's put it that way, will notice that there's this huge shadow in the night sky, dark coming in your directions. The dragon's coming. <laughs> Margaret stands up, pulls out a javelin, and says, All right, I'm ready. You're not. We should head to the forest for cover. Yeah. Uh, Brian will call out to the sailors and the captain, Run for the forest for your lives. <laughs> and he says it like that, too. <laughs> hey, uh, you should probably uh, run for your lives, you know, to the forest, probably. <laughs> run for your lives. Get to the forest line. <laughs> Oh. Okay, and uh, uh, yeah, Helion will look around and say, "Cool. Uh, if anybody needs me, um, well, don't." Uh, and then she takes up her bracelet, puts it on around the neck of the owl like a oh, like man. a talisman. Yeah, like a necklace, like a choker, uh, probably. 
What then happens is Hellion vanishes in a pillar of fire and the owl turns invisible. Uh, and flies towards the forest, but it does so invisible. Uh, Morgrath will start corralling uh, the sailors uh, into the woods. He's like, go, go, move that way. Follow the uh, follow the brand person. Sup will be the first into the woods and the first to uh, create and or find a hiding spot. <coughs> will be the most cowardly, as you might say. Um, I mean... I, I think Hellion beat you to that. <laughs> yeah. That's probably true. <laughs> Hellion, Hellion disappeared into an extra dimensional space, put it on an invisible creature, <laughs> and Monday. was like, nope, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out, bro. Yep. I will have to have a, a possibly a location of the invisible creature if things come oh, yeah. out. It's like it, the, uh, the owl slash yeah, uh, yeah, magma I, method uh, flies into the forest. Yeah, but I'm just uh, I'm just saying if it, com- it comes down to it, since dragons have AOEs, <laughs> uh, it doesn't necessarily have to see the. Yeah, when I say flies into the forest, I mean it spends two or three minutes flying deep into the forest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you guys all disperse. I'm in. Yep. The- Morgoth will make sure all the sailors are into the forest. Once they're in the forest, uh, he'll leave hiding to, you know, hiding to them uh, and then go find his own hiding spot. Okay. Well, roll me stealth rolls for the player characters. Uh, I'm going to make the stealth roll using my uh, method stat. Okay, that's fine. Because, so, like, uh, Hellion doesn't actually exist on this plane. Yeah, Perfectly understandable. <laughs> A clanging. Classic. Yeah. 23. Okay. And you said a 23? Yep. Oh, okay. And where is this? Trying to find the stats for this sucker. Where did I put him? I didn't expect him to come in tonight, but y'all made it such a point. <laughs> no, you made it such a point. No, no we, we could have argued about it for another hour. Don't worry about that. I, no, I, I, no, no, no. I just, I'm just trying to help out here. Uh, <laughs> As far as that. Ah, I see your plan. You're going to kill Bran, and then there won't be anybody left to argue. Or no. or kill oh. Morgrath, and then no. Morgrath will have to agree that the dragon can't be killed. I'm not, ne- I, right now. I'm not necessarily looking to kill anybody. Uh, there you go. Uh, where the heck? Or you can kill Cup, and then I'll be able to make a new character. Or you could kill... <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, I suppose. I know darn well that folder should be on this one too. It's just got too much on my desktop. Can't find it quick and easy. Where the... oh, oh, I'll run and gun for right now okay i ain't gonna hold it up as far as that you see this thing swoop down and the tree tops are swooshing back and forth and such and with uh, that uh, perception check you are able over the beating winds from the wings and such you hear an evil cackle Give me what my lord desires, or this is your fate. And something from about 150 feet up in the air drops down next to the boat, and it flies off. 
Now, if you guys want to take try to take part in shots and things like that, go right ahead. At this point, I would say no. Cup it does not attempt to do that. <laughs> so it is way outside of javelin range. <laughs> I could have hit it even if that I tried. It is a good question for Morgrath, but <laughs> like Helium couldn't do it even if you wanted. To. <laughs> All right, and it goes off to the north. Bran walks, starts walking out, and he's muttering to himself, I already know what's inside the bag. Well, it's not a bag. It's just some. I said something, so. Oh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, what did you say your friend's name was? <laughs> Dagger. <laughs> It's cup. Uh, yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. And that's exactly what I think it is. Okay. Cup. Yeah. <laughs> you'll you'll get uh, Bran. You'll get up there, and you'll notice that it looks uh, like something similar that you've seen before. It looks like a uh, tabaxi uh, part of a forearm in hand and it has a middle finger stuck up or a middle claw stuck up giving a universal sign like maybe it was a last act of desperation or maybe it was defiance to the stand but that sounds like act. dire Brand will. Uh, uh, is that your friend? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it is. Hmm. I guess we don't need to find him anymore. We found him. That's part of him. Brand is going to. Oh, it's just part of him. Yeah, just the, his uh, hand and part of his forearm. Oh, so he could still be alive. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, let's um uh, I'm gonna uh can I change my uh, can I change my pack it's weapon into a shot. shovel? <laughs> Breathe <laughs> if one of you kills you to death. Gotta breathe there, Charles. Take a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to um but if you want to turn my, into a sho uh, into a shovel like I'm going to change it into a pickaxe cuz that is still a weapon. Okay. Uh, but I can I can dig a a little hole for it. Okay. Now, a couple you, do, you do have a cleric in the party, right? No. Okay. Then I'll go I'll let you I'll let you go through with that. And yeah, no, I think we have a monk a uh, what is that? A paladin uh, warlock. We have a well. The paladin. Another warlock. Well, let's let's hold up. The pal <clears throat> the paladin might realize or jog memory. Give me an <clears throat> uh, knowledge religion check. Well, we might be able to resurrect him. <clears throat> religion. Yeah. Hey, a crit! You'll, you'll you'll pull. You're digging this hole, <clears throat> getting ready to bury this part of your friend, <laughs> and uh, you'll uh, come to mind. You'll remember that for some of these uh, raising dead and such that you heard the. Uh, priest talk about that they needed to have part of at least part of them well okay <laughs> um we can open the box and put it in the box for now okay the box is there and it's uh you're gonna open it yeah um as you are about to put in the box 
cup uh, says, uh, wait just a moment here. Um, and would like to see at the point where the arm was severed from the body, does it look like it was torn off or does it look like it was like carefully cut off? <clears throat> it looks like it was chewed off. Um, Paul Grass says, I figured it out. I know who your friend is. Mm. <coughs> a couple, couple then nod to Bran uh, to uh, put it in the box and then turn back to Morgrath and say, yes? It's wherever that dragon's face is. It looks like our friend was eaten. Was what? Eaten. <clears throat> Oh, all right. Well, uh, the rest of his body is with the dragon then? <laughs> yeah. Um, I suppose the good news there. is that perhaps feeding the dragon gold might actually work, but that's the only good news out of all this. Brand does not look that happy, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Which is part of the reason. I am all, I'm very tired of talking. I'm very tired of talking on this subject. Let us get through the night and push on. Brand well, says, I just want all of you to know that since I have now fought with you, you are my companions, and I will not leave any of you behind to get eaten by a dragon. <laughs> <sighs> well, if only you had been uh, there when Dagger was there. <laughs> uh, yes, that would have been, uh, I might have been able to help. When uh, he, left, he left on his own, um, <coughs> the night, unless you guys want to do something uh, spectacular, the night, the rest of the night goes uneventful, mm -hmm. and it's morning. <laughs> yeah, and cup and cup will will you know uh, maybe uh, <coughs> ask to keep watch, split watch with Morgrath, um, and probably you know before. Um, Bren heads to bed, just kind of gives him a pat on the shoulder. and uh, um. Bren says, I agree with you. The dragon has to die. Hmm. Uh, two hours uh, before dawn, uh, Helion shows back up on the ship, having spent six hours sleeping in a nice safe <laughs> um, Oh, nice. Where are you guys <clears throat> where are you guys spending the night? I think we were in the forest. Probably. Um, and so probably with the sailors, you know, keeping watch <sighs> for them and such. Um, it might be a long night, though, because they're trying to keep hidden. No fires. Uh, you know, a lot of people are injured <clears throat> and and or not feeling up to it. So and, and generally paranoid. So. <laughs> um, all right, the, those of you that did not rest on the uh, ship will get a short, the benefits of the short rest. Uh, well, Helion in her amulet will get a long rest, right? <clears throat> that would be correct. Uh, the next morning, Helion will raise something. <laughs> we can talk about it on the barge while we're moving, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that then. Yeah, we'll, we'll head over to the barge. We'll, uh, yeah, a uh, couple continue her rest on the barge, but we'll generally be listening. All right. Uh, do we think the dragon is tracking us by the box? Is that your current working theory? Yeah, um, and uh, just for a, a metagame, I want to talk to Charles after this session. <laughs> okay. But um, this is what we know of the box. The box uh, is an uh, anti-magic field, and it has non-detection on it. And so I do not understand how the dragon is tracking us. It just does, it, it doesn't make any magical sense. What's to keep the dragon from tracking you individually, like tracking us individually? I guess maybe oh. it can't track myself or Helion because we haven't like fought it or anything, but uh, 
can it not just track uh, you guys since uh, you, uh, you have the box? Because it's, it's my understanding that this box has a uh, like an aura about it. Uh, do you think the box being on another plane would be helpful? Maybe. Do you uh, know, uh, can you test if the box has an aura? Um, <sighs> your idea actually has some merit. Are you thinking in your in your little vessel thingy? Yeah, like my uh, vessel uh, operates oh, on the next uh, dimensional uh, plane, uh, um, and anything I take in there and leave in there stays in there. Um, until I bring it back out. Uh, he, I think, uh, any object left in the vessel remains there until carried out. And if the vessel is destroyed, every object stored in there uh, harmlessly appears in an, in an unoccupied space closest to where the vessel formed. If you think it has an aura, you may want to test that first before putting it in a magic space. Well, it's not the it's not the anti magic that has the aura. It's the non detection. Um, now, that's not a, a whole idea, uh, but just a uh, article for thought there with uh, like uh, horrible holes and. Uh, bag of holdings and handy haversacks when you combine them they have unique reactions wait so the so maybe it's not anti, such a hot idea <laughs> what's uh, well, what's anti magic uh, anti magic inside the box so anything anything that is magical if you put it inside the box becomes non magical you see Morgrass scratch his head crow and he says, wait a minute. So the one of the current plans I heard to get rid of the dragon was get the super magic book that nobody can touch and use inside the box so that we can use it, but where it's not magical. Mm. Mm. Once you take it out of the box, it becomes magical again. Well, nobody can touch it outside the box. <sighs> Listen, I don't know all the answers. <laughs> the first true thing said. We don't know how we'd put it in the uh. box either. It's just as difficult to understand that. We're just going to have to go there <clears throat> and look. Unfortunately, neither Bran nor myself nor Dagger were very knowledgeable about magic. And so I believe, Helian, you are the first to know anything about magic that might be useful to us. Yeah. Helian looks at um, Bran and says, wait, I thought you were a warlock. Um, I am. Um, <laughs> say that again. Say it again. You were disconnected. Or disconnected. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have gifts. Just certain certain little tricks I've managed to figure out. <clears throat> and you haven't researched magic. Not formally. Hmm. I, I got my. Uh, well, you've you've never seen it before, but uh, Brian pulls out this. It looks like a ruby, like a Rubik's cube. Are you familiar with, with the, what that is? Uh, yeah. Anyway, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not. It doesn't have colors on it, but it has symbols on it. <clears throat> And you can, you can spin it around and the symbols form different patterns. Sure. And he got his he got his affidavit and his certificate from the Phoenix uh, the online school of Phoenix. <laughs> That's right. Um, <clears throat> but I've been studying I've been studying this this thing and and um, it's it's helped me understand a lot of things. Uh, may I see it? Sure. Uh, she'll take it and kind of fiddle with it and see if she can 
uh, make heads or tails of the symbol. Symbol. Do you, that do you speak Bissell? Do I speak a Bissell? Probably. Uh, yes, I do. Okay, so the symbols resemble Abyssal, but they're not quite. Hmm. And you can send it around and form different symbols and different things, but it just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. But you do get the same feeling, by the way, as your char as your charm bracelet. Yeah. Everybody, give me a perception check. E perception. Here we go. <laughs> uh, seven. Fourteen. Mm, not good. Not good. Thirteen. Oh man, very not good. So the other thing I can tell you, um, like I said, it has the same kind of feeling as your uh, as your bracelet. Have your Italian, have uh, your familiar make a perception check. Uh, Twenty-two. <clears throat> Twenty-two. Your familiar uh, sees on the shore what looks to be a body of a female laying there, not moving. And this is up towards, uh, you guys have been discussing all this, and I'll let you go back to your discussion, but uh, <clears throat> this brings it on up to uh, about 6 o'clock in the evening that you see this on, on the shoreline. Uh, Hellion says, uh, give me Hold one up. second. Uh, can, I, can I pause things real quick? Yep. We finished moving the log <clears throat> at uh, five o'clock in the evening. And then yep. I thought we went to sleep for eight hours in the forest, which was a short rest. You did. <clears throat> okay. So that would put us right closer to some time setting up camp uh, something like. And I thought Brand said we went two more hours uh, travel on the river first because the boat captain wanted to continue on for a bit and then we rested. Yeah, um, that, right. that's true. You're right. You're right. So that would have been then seven, then maybe eight or nine. We'll say nine. So that's going to be like six in the morning when this is happening. No, no. this is six at night. Like we've been traveling for the day. We've been traveling for the, for the full day. Oh, yes. Ah. This is off for a day of travel. Um, you, you've been discussing the... Yeah, we definitely have been things. discussing uh, stuff. I'm, it, I'm, it's I'm, worth noting uh, that trip. there is a lot of stuff we need to discuss, and uh, yeah. that probably happens before an entire day's worth of stuff. Oh, yeah, but I'm just saying, right there is going to be the point. And that's what you're going to see at that point in time. You guys can go back and finish your discussion about okay. this, this and that. I'm not... Okay, just, okay. I'm just putting the cinematic point of what will be foreshadowed in coming. Ah, I understand now. Before okay. I forget it. Very f fair. F totally fine. Um, so kind of going back to Hellion, um, Brand also says, um, I've dreamed of a woman in the... I can't really see her face all that well. Uh, but she's got some ravens about her and uh, sometimes she'll talk to me in my dreams. Ravens. <laughs> yeah, see, this is important because I know exactly who that is. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Does hell you know, though? That's what I'm trying to work out. Uh, she's fairly learned in both religion and arcana proficiency. You could roll. Um, yeah, like, is there a check I can make there, Charles, to have Helia make the connection? Um, <clears throat> I'll let you either use arcana or knowledge religion. Uh, great. Uh, well, those are both the same, so whichever one is more suitable. 
and it's uh, well, they're both equally suitable because when... of certain just different information that you might get. Or okay, so let's call it uh, religion. She's trying to identify it. Got it. Um, uh, Twenty-two. Okay, um, you would uh, you'd be pretty sure of your knowledge on, on who it is uh, 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 being the Raven Queen. Yeah. As far as that, you won't know everything. Yeah, for sure. But you'll know uh, <clears throat> more than an average uh, person. That may have just tripped across it in it in loose studies. Okay, so uh, she'll look to uh, Bran and say, uh, "When we find somewhere that it's possible, you should do some research into the Raven Queen." I should do what? Some research into the Raven Queen. Okay. She's a god of death in some ways um, that resides. On another plane, as most things do. I found this, and he takes the room excuse. I found this on a on a captain I killed in in one of our skirmishes, an enemy captain, I should say. And um, it's been um, I was studying it for a long time, but then what was funny was my my temper got kind of bad. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to put it away for a little bit. I've been reading my holy text. And right now my temper seems to be better. Yeah. Who is your god? Um, give me just a second. Tempest. Hmm. This is the god of war. Yeah. Uh, on the bright side. Not directly opposed to the Raven Queen, so you know, could definitely be worse. Um, oh, you should be fine. I, I don't know. Uh, ultimately, I would do some research into the Raven Queen. Um, it seems likely to me that that's who is giving you your hexing abilities and that kind of thing. I've heard of warlocks having this kind of power in the past. Um, worth considering is that if you're drawing power from the Raven Queen, who is a god, it's possible that Tempest is unimpressed that you're drawing power from multiple sources or that the Raven Queen is unimpressed that you're drawing power from multiple sources. Uh, and they're try trying to influence you. Um, and that's why your temper is bad when you use the cube. What is it that you promised? Have you made a deal with someone? Presumably the lady with the raven. Um, not really. Mm. Uh, then you should be careful. Uh, nothing is given for free. No. Uh, I get a better time of it than most because the one providing my my, my power is my father. Um, but even still, there are costs associated with accessing Warlock magic. Which is definitely something that you have been doing. I've witnessed it in battle, whether you know it or not. I will look into it when we get a chance. Uh, yeah, you're going to struggle to look into it here, but when you get a minute, Something that should be considered. Okay. Did you have something, um, Isaac? Uh, Cup says, Hellion, um, 
Is there anything you know about the box? Uh, I don't know what is it. I don't have it. <laughs> I look at Bran. <laughs> oh, I've shown you guys the box. <clears throat> I mean, I'll pull it out. Uh, I'll take a look at it. Uh, let's see what it's about. All right, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, see. I don't have identify if that's what you're asking. Is it? Cup doesn't know what identify is, and so you do whatever you want to do. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm more of that. I'm <laughs> just letting you don't know. Don't worry, I'm not offended that you're not casting identify. If we, 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 we had it uh, identified, and we had, uh, also did a legend lore on it. Yeah, Cup wasn't there for the legend lore, <sighs> um, but fair. That's how we, that's why, and basically I've told you everything that Charles has told us. Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, the other ability, the other one was um, timelessness. Yep. I just remembered. And this is what the box looks like. Okay, but like, for example, uh, nobody had mentioned that the box was bigger on the inside than the outside. Yep. Uh, that's important information. <laughs> Charles. Yes. Is it bigger on the inside? Because I don't think so, right? It You would have the feeling that you can put more stuff in, to, uh, more stuff into this, than what should from common, you know, just your common perception and common sense, than what the size that you see that it holds. So uh, you could. The deduct that yes, it's it's actually bigger on the inside than on the outside in a rough way. Uh, yeah, in that case, it's not coming with me into the extra dimension. <laughs> Cup says, wait, so what's wrong with it then? Uh, if you take something like that that's bigger on the inside than the outside uh, into another space that's bigger on the inside than the outside, bad things happen. Like portals to, to other planes, bad. It's <laughs> good to know. And now we do. All right. So I guess around, unless anyone has anything else that they want to talk about, around six yeah. o'clock at night, we got this dilemma. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hellion well, spotting this um, would kind of interrupt the conversation and say, uh, uh, guys, I'll be right back. And then Misty steps to where this woman is. All right. I mean, <clears throat> so I'm going to jump things back again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because the whole point of this conversation still hasn't right. been reached. Um, so uh, Hellion says this about the box. And then Cup asks Hellion, um, can it be destroyed, the box? Uh, anything can be destroyed if you look hard enough to have to destroy it. But you don't know if, like, a fire would do it. The fire almost certainly wouldn't do it. Okay. Uh, a fire isn't going to destroy mundane magical items. That's a contradiction in terms. But a uh, mundane magical item, if you like. Um, like, uh, I don't know. Hey, Brian, your sword's magical, right? <laughs> well, it is. Great. So a fire isn't going to destroy Brian's sword because it's magical. Uh, also, it's a sword and made of metal, and those things generally don't burn well. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I know okay. a little <laughs> tiny bit about magic just from my own personal studies. Um, you can essentially m melt steel, normal everyday steel. You can melt down. Sure. But once you get into you know it's magic, then it becomes much more difficult to destroy. Yeah. And then the next category above that, from my understanding, is artifact. Yeah. Which, when we cast a legend lore spell, we were told that this is an artifact. Um, uh, if you are told this is an artifact, then destroying it is going to be next to impossible. Artifacts generally have, you can destroy artifacts, but they have a specific way to destroy them. Uh, and you would need to figure out what that is before you can destroy it. Okay. <clears throat> so, <laughs> the goal is to stop this chaos god from coming in. Yes. The method is to collect a magical book to help us kill a is to collect a magical book to repay the debts that we are owed for this information we learned and to kill a dragon, a lich dragon, a dragon lich, whatever. Um, and then in order to do that, we're looking for both allies and this magical book, which we have to collect anyway. So this is the method and goals. Sounds about what, right. We are each individuals, but as a group, what are we agreeing on for how we are going to do these things? Are we going to attack anything that looks like it's a skeleton? <laughs> I would assume yes, based on previous experience, but right. Uh, or are we trying to hide from the dragon until we have better allies, in which case we should run from those fights? I think we have to weigh every encounter separately. Cool. I don't believe that uh, we have the strength to uh, stand against the dragon at this point. So against the dragon, we need to run, we need to hide. Okay. Um, if we were to come up to a bunch of zombies or skeletons, um, I think we could easily wade through them with very little effort. Okay. So we'll speak on those we know more about then. What about the Dark Queen? She's in the same category as the dragon, although she bleeds easier than she than the dragon does. Um, I would agree with you on that. Well, I got a lucky hit on her. Well, um, the dragon is also a skeleton, so it probably doesn't bleed at all. Oh, well, that's true. But I, <laughs> in, in one of her flybys, she got a little too close um, and I got a lucky hit on her and she took damage. So she is definitely mortal and definitely, you know, anything that bleeds can die. Assuming that that thing is the dark queen on the dragon, fair, okay. Um, She's very powerful now. Sure, sure. Um, we are heading to get the book. We need more information about the book and this box, perhaps oh, yeah. in order to put the book in the box or to figure out how to destroy the book or the box. And we are heading to Kamizna to figure this out. Yes. Is Morgan that the sound that's up there? Because I can't see it. Uh, yes, it is. It is. Uh, it's kind of close. It's the closest city, really. Yeah. Morgan seems like he's 
uh, thinking very hard about something and says, uh, I agree with whatever Hellion said. Uh, <laughs> what if, so which which thing? <laughs> he just kind of waves a hand, like whatever whatever Hellion says. <laughs> Cup turns to Hellion <laughs> and then says, you should tell Morgrath to pay attention and care about things. <laughs> anyway. Why? We've spent the entire day having the same conversation over and over again. <laughs> it's reaching a point where I know, I'm not paying I'm attention or caring about things. Oh, man. Okay. Um, like, we keep having the same conversation and it's going nowhere. Cup says... Uh, okay. Uh, you, you agree, Bran? Yes, I agreed several hours ago. <laughs> okay. Cup uh, jumps out of the boat and starts swimming towards the side of the river. Well, where is he going? I'm leaving. And why are you doing that? Cup says, fuck you. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. And... Uh... Let's see here. Seems like a good place to stop with then the dead body being found, but uh, that's up to you. <laughs> is it a dead body? I don't know. Nobody is really. And this is basically the dragon that you've been seeing. Yeah. Okay. Morgoth would yell at your cup, uh, noticing uh, someone splashing into the water. I have a question. <laughs> Ask Hellion. <laughs> uh, no, I have a question for cup. <laughs> Have Hellion ask it for you. Hellion, ask up a question for me. <laughs> oh, man. What is your question? I want to know... Uh, Morgan seems like he... I want to know uh, how Cup would fight a dragon. Hey, Cup, how would you fight a dragon? Uh... Cup actually considers that for a moment and then says, and then starts swimming back to the boat. <laughs> uh, gets up on, <clears throat> onto the boat all waterlogged, takes three vials off uh, her hip and says, I would cover weapons with this. It's called holy water and it has a particularly negative effect on undead. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and then jumps back in the water. So <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have my familiar follow cut. Sure. Hey, hell yeah! I wasn't paying attention. I was thinking about how to fight a dragon. What's going on? Is Cup scouting? Uh, Cup's leaving. Why is Cup leaving? As far as I can tell, because he's selfie. <laughs> what? Do, wait, where are we going? Did you guys? Did you decide what that we were doing? Uh, I, I have very little idea what just happened. Uh, uh, Cup was trying to have a conversation, and uh, which was responded in the way that was. And Brand sees Cup go, okay, and then leave, uh, and then come back and hand you guys uh, some holy water because. Clearly, there's a dragon that needs to be killed with, and this is for that. And then leaves again. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can do what you want in character. It's up to you. You have plenty of time to talk. <laughs> hey, Hellion, you can keep track of me with your uh, flying thing, right? Yeah. Uh, Morgath is going to jump out and swim with Cup. Okay. <laughs> All right. Where are we going, Cup? The shore. All right, that seems obvious. Where are we going after that? Are we just going to sit there? Uh, I haven't decided yet. Oh, okay. I don't know how magic works, but I had an idea. Mm -hmm. um, I think that this, uh, this person might be tracking where the box isn't. Uh, because if the box can't be tracked by magic, if you if you keep track of the thing where the box isn't, that would explain why 
the dragon hasn't just attacked us because it doesn't quite know where we are, but it knows about where we are. That makes sense. Uh, and, and so I haven't got all the way through the plan, but if we sneak away from the box, eventually maybe the, we can ambush the dragon. Has anybody checked on the body? A, yeah, I don't it think sounds, it sounds like Hellion is uh, doing the Misty Step thing. I mean, it depends. If, if, that, if you still do that based on the circumstances. I mean, if I still see the body based on the, like... <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, you still see the body. It, it's there, laying, uh, laying face down on the edge of the water, feet in the water. Uh, then, yeah, Helen will still go and check in the body. Oh, okay. Um, describe to me how you're, uh, what, what you're doing and, and such. Uh, the first thing she does is check to see if the body will look like if it's alive. Uh, how, uh, how, uh, how so? Uh, you know, well, the usual is uh, checking to see if they're breathing, checking oh, to see if they're pulse. Shallow, there's uh, shallow breath and shallow pulse. Uh, great. Uh, she'll pull the ground. Bring the boat over. Huh? All right. The, uh, yeah, she'll call over to Bram. Hey, Bram, <laughs> I need your healing bells. What's that? Uh, you're a paladin, right? I need you to come and heal this person. Um, okay. Uh, once we get along uh, shore, uh, Bran will uh, walk over and give her five hit points. Okay. She'll open up her eyes and such, and uh, she'll blink a few times and... Uh, She'll smile faintly, weakly, and uh, let's see here. Yeah, that would be the best right here. Let's see here. Okay, let's see. And she's just groggy and and like that, move uh, moving about, uh, mumbling, a, hard to understand what she's saying. Uh, it, you know that type of mumble when you uh, confused, uh, disoriented. Yeah. Uh, what language is she speaking? Is she just speaking in common? Um, yeah. Uh, so here we are look now and say, uh, uh, peace, friend. Uh, what is what is going on? I found you by the river. And uh, uh, Brand, did you see that message? Um, on Zoom. Oh, okay. One second. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, she, she'll say a large snake destroyed our craft and ate my crew. <laughs> okay. Damn. Let me get this to you then. Okay. And uh, I need, I need help. I need I need uh, the rest food. Uh, you can rest there. You'll be safe. Uh, we can, uh, we can uh, certainly get you food and 
you said it was about six o'clock at night. Certainly, we can set up camp. And uh, we're missing two of our group. You realize that, right? Yeah. I oh. mean, you say that, and then you look over because, like, we were assuming you guys were boating. So there's a good chance that we're just like some distance further on the same shore. <laughs> I'm, but yes, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up. This is to be the end, kind of preview encounter for who I, I don't see who said that it's almost time for them to go. So I wanted to let that know, be known out there, and we'll tie that on up. And in fact, this is a good, as good a spot as any, and we'll pick it up from here as far as that. So. For those that need to go, uh, what you'll get is, uh, I don't know how deadly I'd call that for levels that you guys are. So I'll say one, experience, and two, our uh, uh, inspiration. Sounds good. As, as far as that. So, um, and I hope you're enjoying it and what i will do is i'll i'll stop the the recording and for those uh open back up here um those that uh want or need to stick around and chat i'll stick around for a bit sounds good thanks for playing uh, arthur